Hi everyone, today is Monday, August 11th, 2014. Welcome to a new episode of What's New in Enterprise Maps. My name is Brad Songer and I work on the Google Maps for Business team here in our New York City office. And joining today from Google's worldwide headquarters in Mountain View, California, we have Ajay Hamrani. Ajay is going to bring us up to speed on some of the news and developments around Google Enterprise Maps since our last update back on May 5th earlier this year. Ajay, it's always good to be with you, and I understand you have a lot of exciting things for us today. Hi, Brett. Thanks for having me. Always happy to be here. And so today I'm going to talk about the sharing and access model for Maps Engine, how that has changed and become a lot simpler today. Next, I will go over a product integration news that went out recently about Maps Engine Pro and Coordinate. And finally, I'll point our viewers to an interesting tool called Maps API Checker that was launched very recently by the Geo Enterprise team. Okay, great. So why don't we just go in that order um, and learn about the new collaboration tools in Google Maps Engine? Sure, perfect. And so I'll start with access lists. And so what's happened is ever since we've launched Maps Engine, we've used access lists to configure access for our data editors and administrators so that they could go in, upload data, create layers, create maps, and so on and so forth. Today, access lists are gone and replace the access configuration with a much simpler way, all done through the console. And so since seeing is believing, I'll jump into my console and show you how that works today. All right, now I'm in my console, and when I click on the dashboard in the menu, on the top right-hand side, there's a settings icon which I can click, which gives me the new Manage Administrators link. In this page, I'm able to add one user at a time and assign the role of a creator or an administrator. So let me go ahead and put paul at learngeo.org as an example here. I'm going to go ahead and click on Save. And so what I've just done is added Paul as a data creator. What this allows Paul to do when he logs into mapsengine.google.com is to be able to upload data, create layers, create maps, and all that good stuff. And in the same way, I could have added a whole different user and given him the administrator role. This seems like a much simpler way to manage the permissions when information is being shared between groups of people. Is there a limit on the number of creators or administrators someone could designate? Good question, Brett. So today we can have up to 20 administrative accounts and many, many data creators. But you were right to mention the sharing piece because that's exactly the next topic I'm going to talk about. Now, this is still continuing with the same story. The fact that now access lists are gone, we're not able to anymore use the data viewers access list. But today we have a much simpler, more intuitive way, the same experience like we have for sharing Google Docs and spreadsheets. And so we've adopted the same experience when it comes to sharing our assets in Maps Engine. And again, I'm going to jump into my console and show you how that works today. All right, so I'm in my console and I'm going to click on one of the assets I have, which is a map right here. Now, if you're the admin or the creator of that asset, you'd see the sharing icon right here. If I go ahead and click on that, I can add users to be able to access this map, just like I would share a Google Doc or a Google Spreadsheet, right? So I can add Paul at LearnGeo. And now Paul would have access to this map. The other thing, Brett, that you may have already noticed is when I clicked on this icon right here, you would have noticed two modes, the draft version and the published version. So draft version is really to allow other creators and editors to come in into Maps Engine Console and edit this particular asset, whereas the published version sharing is for consumers, and so they will be able to launch the map from any of the supported clients, for example, the built-in viewer or the Earth client. So actually going back to where you added uh, Paul at LearnGeo.org. So mm -hmm. let's say Paul is actually one member of a larger group of employees, call them project managers, and instead of actually sharing this map with every single project manager individually, you would actually probably share the map with that predefined group of users. So you would do a search for project managers, that would come up as an option, and then you would choose that instead of adding people individually. Is that correct? Right, Brett, you said it right. And so even when we had access list, that was a general recommendation to add in groups of people instead of individuals. This is just to make housekeeping easier in the future. And so even today, uh, 
with access layers gone and we have got a new way of setting up access and sharing, that best practice still stays. So we always recommend whenever possible to add in groups of people instead of individuals. Well, in some cases, we'll be sharing information and collaborating with people who work at their desks in an office setting. In other cases, we're going to be collaborating with people in the field. So I know you have something interesting to share about uh, some of the mobile capabilities that we're bundling together with Google Maps Engine. Sure, Brett. And so this is one really exciting piece of news. And today we have Maps Engine Pro and Maps Coordinate bundled into one offering. The main driver for this integration was really to remove the pricing barrier around Maps Coordinate. And so today an individual can, for as low as $5 per month per user, or we have the annual option, which is $50 per user per year, can easily get access to Maps Engine Pro and Maps Coordinate. And for individuals, they can easily get set up and running through the wallet signup. And another main benefit is that today, we already have the capability to have cross-domain team members in the same coordinate team. So that equates to about a 4 to 5x reduction in the price of those technologies when they previously buy them separately, which is really exciting. But in terms of the cross-domain sharing, in other words, does that basically mean that Paul from abc.com and Susan from xyz.com, they could each own their individual licenses of Google Maps Engine Pro and Coordinate and work for different organizations even, but still be able to collaborate and work together as a team. Yes, you're right, Brett. And so in the past, that was not possible. Users had to be from the same domain to be in the same coordinate team, uh, but not anymore. Today, things have changed, and we are allowed to have people from different domain as part of the same coordinate team. That's, that's going to unlock some really powerful collaboration, so that's really exciting. So now let's hear about the last item you mentioned during the intro, which relates to a new Chrome extension for the Maps API. Could you maybe elaborate on that a little bit for us? Right. And so what the Geo Enterprise team has done is launch this really interesting tool called Maps API Checker. It's a Chrome extension, free of charge. And once you install it and visit any site that has implemented Maps API, what it does is it gives you instant feedback on things like whether the client ID has been implemented correctly, how many map loads you're using if you are trying to get some layers from Maps Engine, and all that good stuff. And so let me show you where to get this extension first, and then uh, I will walk you to an example. And so under the Chrome Extension Store, if you look for a Maps API Checker, that will appear in the search list. And once you've installed it, you can load up a site. I'm using Eyes on the Forest, which is a joint effort uh, with the Google Earth Outreach project. And so this site has a Maps API implementation. At the same time, it's fetching some Maps Engine layers. And so if you notice, there's this little place mark icon here. When I click on that, it gives me an instant report and tells me things like, you know, this seems to be a free version of Google Maps because uh, the client ID is missing out. And if you happen to be a Maps API for Business customer, this is a good notification to let you know that maybe you've not implemented your client ID. Uh, a little bit on the JavaScript API call, the libraries you're using. This is also going to be good feedback if you did not realize that you're using a lot more libraries than you're actually using in the code. This could be good feedback. Um, all the way down, it also gives you some information around the map loads because in this example, it's fetching some layers from Maps, Maps Engine. And so for our customer, they may want to know for each user visiting the site how much it's going to cost them in terms of map loads. So all that good stuff uh, through this one little click of a mouse button. So in other words, a bunch of manual tasks that were covered in the deployment checklist are really simple as, like you said, clicks of a mouse. So really, it takes a lot of the guesswork out of correctly implementing the Maps API in your website. Is that sort of a fair summary? Yes, that is correct, Brett, and it's going to save people a lot of time. The theme of the improvements Ajay described revolve around simplifying and really opening up the channels of collaboration using Google Maps within and between organizations. This gets even more exciting with the announcement to bundle Google Maps coordinate with Google Maps Engine Pro and reduce that price by about 75%. But everyone, that concludes our episode of What's New Enterprise Maps. Thanks for sharing part of your day with us, and thanks for using Google Maps. See you next time.